folks, my name is Jonicky, and this is Madame Bathsheba. And together we are Catamancy Tarot. So today I'm doing a follow-up to a previous video that I did a few months back all about uh, my quest for new and better oracles. Um, I'll link that video down below, but basically, if you didn't see it, I have um, vastly more tarot decks in my collection than I do Oracle, and I, you know, I don't think I'm alone in this problem where I find it's harder to find a really good Oracle deck than it is to find a good tarot deck, and I wanted to consciously start looking for more Oracle decks that would work in my practice. I love using Oracle um, in addition with tarot. I'm one of those readers who likes to use multiple decks and do fun pairings. And so I've been on I've been on a quest for more oracles. And today I wanted to do an update to that quest. I've acquired um, about four new oracles in the, since I filmed that video. And I wanted to do a little bit of a check in um, to show you um, to show you those new decks and how I've been working with them and if they've been working out. A couple of them have and a couple of them haven't. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you the share those with you and I'll probably do a couple more videos in this series. Um, I have my next uh, oracles in mind that I want to um, bring in for my next video on this. So this is not this is a theme that we're going to continue talking about. Uh, but for today, I'll just go ahead and flip this around and show you uh, the new ones that I've been playing with. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so the first deck I'm gonna show you should come as absolutely no surprise to anyone um, because I already made a full kind of um, flip through of this deck and I talked about it more extensively. This is my advanced copy of When Olga Speaks, which is an analog collage oracle made by Sasha Lopez. Um, and uh, this deck was was uh, like love at first sight. <laughs> I had a strong visceral reaction to this deck the first time I ever saw it, which was on um, Sasha's Instagram uh, much earlier this year. Um, and so this is a deck that um, uh, it had one Kickstarter that um, didn't fully fund this summer, but she's going to launch it um, hopefully um, sometime soon. Um, I haven't heard definitively about when she's going to launch it yet, um, but basically, I uh, I love this deck. <laughs> um, it's it's like quickly quickly joined the ranks of like all time favorite oracle decks ever. Um, my top tier, <laughs> some of my top tier oracle decks are like Road to Nowhere by Mary Evans, which is sadly out of print, and things like the Tantric Dakini Oracle. Um, which was a um, the first collage oracle made by Penny Slinger in the 70s. Um, so huge analog collage um, fan. And um, just the variety of... I just... it It's a really good reader. Um, and that's something I wanted to kind of talk about too with these, is that, um, you know, in that first video... I had just gotten it and was playing around with it, but it is it is a deck that continued to just read. It reads really well, and it's a really excellent general reader, and that was one of the things I wanted to kind of um, specifically set out to find and acquire more of, um, because I think with, with Oracle decks, it's easy to get an Oracle um, that's just like very specific and does only one thing. And this is a, this is an Oracle deck that really does, um, read, read super well for a variety of issues. And I just find that the images are really, really evocative. Um, and sometimes with an Oracle deck, I find that the, um, the keywords will do more work um, in a reading than the actual image will. And I don't find that to be the case um, in this oracle at all, which I actually prefer. And the next deck I'll show you um, is an example where I find the keywords do more work than the actual images. And with this, I can go off of several different things. The images for me are really evocative, so 
I um, and this is keep in mind I I haven't received um, Sasha Sasha hasn't um, put out the guidebook yet so once that's out I think I'll get even more out of it um, but so far I find that the images themselves are really invocative and there's a lot of different elements on each card that um, I might be able to kind of like pick up on during a reading in addition to the keyword. Um, and so for that reason, I think this is this is one of the reasons why it's kind of like um, super top tier for me is that the images themselves are evocative on their own. So like if you just got this image in a reading uh, without the title, you would still be able to kind of really get something out of it. Um, you would get um, you would be able to get, you know, the the tension, the force, the effort, the teamwork um, and the ally also does something interesting where it, it, it doesn't overpower the image, but it brings something kind of new into the image, if that makes sense. Um, so I can't wait for this deck to kind of <laughs> make its grand entrance into the world. And I'm so, so excited for it to do so. Um, and yeah, absolutely. This is all time, uh, all time favorite Oracle deck territory. So huge success, huge success on this front. Absolutely adore it. Um, uh, I can't wait to have all of, all of the additions. Um, this was just a little, um, advanced copy that was just like, you know, make playing cards, card stack, but, uh, really excited for the full version to come out. And I'll let you guys know when that happens. The next deck is this little guy. This is the Craft Decadence Oracle by La Greenwich. And this is on, um, uh, oh, uh, Game Crafters. You can get this print on demand. And um, this is another collage deck. Uh, so, <laughs> love collage. I've, this was on my radar for like... Um, Ever since I think Meg from Rose Honey Ritual showed it off on her channel, like maybe over a year ago, um, and I don't know why I didn't just get it then, um, because I do really like it. I did these fun little fun little edges, which I'm super stoked about. I've been obsessed with doing these kind of like two tone edges on decks recently, having a lot of fun with it. But um, there's a couple things about this deck. Uh, that uh, I've I've been I've honestly this is the the deck that I've I've been reaching for this like all the time and I think I've been reaching for it all the time um, because it's little it's little and it's cute and I want I yeah I, I want more little little oracle friends um, but there's two things about this deck that kind of uh, stop it from being like super super top tier for me um, and the first one <laughs> is maybe me just being really petty and I just hate the I hate the I hate the finish on this cardstock so it's um, game crafters linen and if you can see I, I think my camera is picking it up it has the weirdest texture, so it's not like any other linen finish I've ever I've seen where it's just kind of this overall texture. To me, it almost looks like this like weird circuit board, and the pattern is like really, really obvious. Um, and it's I find it super distracting. I I'm not a big fan of linen finishes overall, unless it's for like playing card decks. Um, because like while yes it does help shuffle i find it really disrupts the image for me because i just notice the texture and i just i hate it so much like this is my least favorite cardstock ever uh, <laughs> um and it's super upsetting because i love this little guy and i i like i would use it more if it didn't feel like this and i wish I know on make playing cards, sometimes you can like select different finishes um, to get, but uh, on Game Crafters, there isn't that option, um, which is, I 
upsetting because I'm interested. La Green Witch also has, I think, the Noisy Museum Tarot, which um, Thea at Garden Goddess Tarot did a really great walkthrough of, and I am very tempted by that deck, but it has the same trash finish. <laughs> and uh, I don't think I can, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I, so uh, my solution has been only to use this deck at night when I can't see the finish as much which is silly and weird but anyways uh enough of that but um where I was talking about with when Olga speaks that it has a really good balance of like very evocative images that you can use it for divination or for just readings uh versus the kind of the balance with the keywords where the keywords don't really overpower the Im image. This is a deck where the keywords dominate. Um, if I just had these images alone without, without any of the words, I wouldn't honestly get a, a ton out of them. They are very fun. Um, <laughs> uh, but I feel like the keywords in this deck do the heavy lifting, and I love the keywords. Hallucinated vision, ethereal trip, unearthly procession, ineffable genius. Like, I uh, this, I love the keywords. They're really interesting and unusual and strange. Um, we have, and then we have, like, some other little stuff here. Virtuos of knowledge, smart rebellion, wisdom cocoon, inside knowledge, solitary learning, um, devastated versatility, wasted polyvalence, forced stop. So uh, the keywords are super unique. Um, and one thing I will say is sometimes they're so out there <laughs> that you don't quite understand what's going on. Like if I got this card, I've been using this deck also in readings for other people. And sometimes like the reading will be going on, going along and going along, and then something like this will come up and everyone is just kind of puzzled and laughs and we just have to try and figure it out together. So I would say that this is, this is really fun, but not all of the keywords are, um, like, uh, what do you do with sweet autarky, gentle selfishness, self-devotion? Um, like it's 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 a really fun and interesting phrase, um, but yeah, uh, I found that this deck sometimes caused some like awkward moments of pause of like yeah I don't know what's going on there, um, which can be fun. Um, so I wouldn't say that's necessarily like a bad thing, but it's just a it's just a <laughs> it's a it's a total vibe it's a total vibe and I like the color scheme of these like deep purples and like pops of yellow and um I feel like the backs are fun it is I, it does feel like a little a little bit you know um <laughs> a little bit like goth a little bit like you know um the the creative writing kind of goth where uh, yeah, it's just these, like, really interesting, strange ideas, um, that, uh, you know, <laughs> you wouldn't have heard of anyways, um, that kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know. Like, Abignation, never seen that before in, in an Oracle deck. Very fun. Uh, the cat agrees. She's come to say hello, as always. Um, but yeah, I've... Uh, this came up in a crazy spot during a reading, um, for a friend recently. So this was wild. This was great. Um, resumption of power, manifest darkness. Yeah. So overall, I would say this is a hit, uh, more tiny collage oracles, please. Um, hate this card finish. Um, it also goes really well with a lot of things. Um, I've been using this. The deck I've been like really obsessed with using recently, ever since I got it earlier this summer, um, is this one. Um, whoop, let's open it up. 
this is the um, Vertigo Tarot. It's out of print, um, but it's it's made by the folks who made the Sandman comics, um, and the guidebook was by Rachel Rachel Pollock. Um, super cool, and I think it goes really well together. Sorry, I've got a little bit of little bit of glare there. Um, but yeah, I've been using these a lot because I think the dark kind of the dark purples and the sort of collage elements go really well together. So I've been like super obsessed with this combo recently um, and having having a good time with it. Um, so I did uh, I was over at some friends the other weekend and I just did a bunch of like kind of spooky readings with these two decks and it was a big hit. It was a big hit. So yeah, really been, really been digging this, um, for sure. I think they go super well together. So that's the little craft decadence oracle. Um, I'm thinking that it, it also, I might need to make a little bag for it because I've been using it a lot and the, I've only had it a couple months and this tuck box is not going to last. It's just not going to last. Um, so uh, maybe maybe we'll get a little, a little bag, a little pouch going. Yes, please. Um, yeah, so on the note of working with this deck, um, there, another deck that... I got another Oracle deck that I want to talk about um, that I thought would go really well with this deck and also go really well with this deck, the Abyssal. Mmm, ooh, which Oracle deck could it be? And this is one that when I first made um, my um, Oracle Quest Conundrum video, the deck that was most suggested by you all that I would dig, um, hello cat, is this one. This is the Death Doula Oracle. I think I have the um, second edition, which I don't think there's many changes, if any. And I, uh, I was curious about this deck ever since it came out, um, but I wasn't. I wasn't entirely sure about it. And I'm still not entirely sure about it. Um, I know there's some folks who have really loved, really loved working with this deck. And I'm, I don't think I'm 100% sold yet. Uh, I find the images themselves to be really beautiful and quite compelling. Um, I like, I especially, I like, I want more abstract photography oracles. Uh, so if you know of any other abstract photography oracles, please let me know. Um, uh, so I do really like the images, but there's something about the presentation of this deck that feels very, it feels almost like cold. It feels clinical. It feels, um, it feels almost like you walk into this, like, if you've ever been to, like, a really high-end art gallery where all of the, like, walls are just kind of, like, oppressively white and the lighting is just very, uh, fluorescent. Um, and then, I don't know, uh, it also sometimes, I don't know. Uh, whoopsies. It can all, it almost comes off as like a little bit, um, not, not like pretentious, pretentious, but, uh, like, um, yeah, just like the, the high end art gallery vibes where it's like very conceptual and, um, I don't know, like, uh, so, uh, to, yeah, I don't know. I think the white borders and the gold just make it feel very, yeah, clinical, very, um, I don't know. So this doesn't, this isn't a deck that feels like warm and inviting to me. Um, I think this is a deck that, so I've tried to work with this and I just, I keep not wanting to reach for it because it's, it just hasn't been the vibe recently. 
And I think this deck might, um, I might start re wanting to reach for it more in winter. This does, because it does feel, it feels like a cold deck. I don't know. Um, it feels very cold to me. Um, and this is a deck where, again, I think that the, the keywords do most of the hard work. Um, because if this image itself came up in a reading, um, other than just like a, a vibe, <laughs> you wouldn't really be able to kind of use it in a reading where as soon as you like, so the, the words themselves do a lot of the work and some of the, like these are kind of fairly standard. I've got the void remothering, unprocessed, cleanse. So I'll, I do like, I do like a lot of the words, but there's a few of them in here that I just, um, that don't quite hit right. Um, I've got more of these, but, um, so I'm still, I guess I'm still warming up to this one. Um, I'm not completely sold yet, but I think I just need to keep keep playing with it more because I, again, I do really like the images. Um, and so I thought, I thought that I would, um, and I think it does kind of go all right with some of the decks I mentioned. Like I thought this would be a fun combo. Um, and it kind of is. Uh, but maybe not quite, maybe not quite. Yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about it. I'm not sure about it. Um, and then likewise, let's see, I thought I, I, I wanna find a good Oracle friend for this deck, cause I love this deck and I, I use it with all sorts of things. Um, but uh, this is a, oh, this is a, a huge, huge, uh, nudity warning. Um, it's a photographic deck. Um, and it is a little bit, it's an underwater photography deck. So the images have this like really soft quality. Um, and I thought that it might, it might go well. But again, I think these, uh, the abyssal tarot feels like temperature wise, this feels a lot warmer, a lot softer. Um, this feels like cold and sharp to me. And so I don't think it's, it, it, I don't think it actually goes. And so I was hoping it would for some reason, like an image like this, I think does work. Um, but the other thing about this deck is that um, it feels like there's a lot of different vibes going on. So for instance, you have these, and um, someone made a really good video uh, um, that I can try and find and link below. Um, I'm forgetting the name of their channel, so I apologize for that, but I can link it. Um, where they uh, came up with all of the different like suits in this deck by just organizing the images. Um, and I thought that was like super interesting, very compelling. Um, but yeah, I'm still, I'm still not quite sure what to what to do about the uh, the death doula because um, I know that was like a popular a popular suggestion so um, yeah I don't um, I don't really I, I don't know what to do with it yet so one thought I had was um, especially like I do really like the kind of abstract nature cards in here those I like a lot. So I thought, and this is the last um, new Oracle deck that I will bring out today. And this is the, ooh, it's a little guy. It's another little Oracle. This is the um, uh, Nature Wisdom Message Oracles. And for the longest time, you could just find this on Amazon, but I panicked because Amazon now says that this deck is going out of print. And I was still able to like very easily find an affordable copy on eBay. But um, 
not to alarm anyone, but if this is a deck that's been on your radar or your list for a while, now might be the time. I think it's made by an Australian creator and like she still has decks on her website, um, but I'm in the US and don't want to do shipping from Australia if I can, um, if I can avoid it. But anyways, my thought was, was that this actually might go really well with um, the Death Doula and it might make it a little bit softer for me. Um, and I think, I think that is successful, like using these guys together um, because I think it draws in the, the natural elements more. But I think um, like when we flip this, when we get to these more like Abyssal Void cards, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, again, um, it doesn't work as well. But something like this is okay. But really when you get these like really nice nature Im images, um, they do work. So one idea might be to like separate this out. So I only have the kind of like nature photography cards and then use, just use a, like a, a, condensed deck for just those for certain things and then collect all of like you know these style images to use uh more with like the abyssal tarot and like I don't know I don't know I so I I think there's some more like problem shooting to be done with this deck but like that looks great I think that that works nicely um so yeah still playing around still playing around. Um, so that's, yeah, that's the Death Doula. And then let's talk a little bit more sort of concretely about this little guy. So I like the size. This is one of the decks that has, um, doesn't have a guidebook, but it has these like key um, messages on the back. Um, and I think this is a deck where um, the keywords are just, um, <laughs> uh, are labels. Like they're just, they say what the image is of. Um, so it's quite literal. And then on the back, you get a little bit more about like, what is it? What does grass mean? Well, grass means that you're being reminded to walk gently on the earth to honor everything as your equal. Um, so, you know, um, uh, I think um, with these, I think the image and the words do sort of equal work, but a lot of, you know, <laughs> a lot of the wor words are just uh, objects in nature out in the world and, you know, in themselves don't have like a huge um, divinatory meeting. But like, I can, I can go off of just this, like snail shell. Like, you know, maybe you got to bring a little bit of a, you know, home around with you. Something to protect your, you know, slimy, squishy bits. Um, and overall, I, I, I do think this one's really cute. I don't have a ton of um, nature oracles. And I would really love to get my hands on... Um, oh, what's, what's his name? Am I going to forget his name? No, I'm not. Ted Andrews. Um, so, you know, t oh, I would love to get my hands on some Ted Andrews decks. They're all, um, out of print pretty much. Um, but he has the, like, um, I think it's just the animal wisdom tarot, which would be super fun. And then also, um, I think he has like a nature speaks oracle that I would also really love to get my hands on but um both of those decks I'm not quite willing to pay out of print prices on so I'm separating a few cards out here because overall I like most of the images quite a lot and I feel like there's a lot going on in them or like a lot to go off of but then there's some objects here that feel really, really out of place. Um, I don't know, the, or you get like man-made things, like you get the table and like, um, 
and then you get sound with like a sheet music, you get these wind turbines. Um, I think there's like, I don't know, there's a few that I think don't quite fit. Like I understand the, like why litter would be, uh, you know, have a place in this, but I just, I don't know, for some of them, I feel like I want less man-made things in here, but overall, um, I think it's very cute and it, you know, I think I'm going to really like using this deck in, uh, Michigan winters, uh, when you just want to, you just wish, you just wish for a little greenery and you just, you know, you miss the sky. <laughs> and so I think that this is, this is also going to be a winter deck for me. Um, and I wanted to use this as an opportunity to also show you guys uh, a deck I've never shown on my channel before. Um, and it's my, it's my, uh, <laughs> it's what I use as an animal oracle. But um, I'm someone who I struggle with using animal decks. And I'll tell you why. Um, so here we have a reptile. Pictured we have this like lovely gecko dude with a tongue. Love him. Love that. Reptile. So um, when we flip this over, what do we get? We get listen to your dreams day and night. You're exploring life with inner act, uh, with intent. Active, involved. Sit in silent contemplation. Know that your visions and dreams offer tr truth and potential. Um, deja vu equals prospects. Your dreams are ripe with tangible opportunity. Observe well. Now, if I encountered this little gecko dude out in the wild, and I asked him what he might have in, in terms of advice of how to live as a creature in the world, I don't think he would tell me about dreams and deja vu. Uh, <laughs> I think he would tell me about, you know, the best time to molt and, you know, where's the best grubs at and, like, you know, how to attract a mate with your skin or, you know, how how best to clean your eyeballs. I don't know. So uh, I, I struggle with when the, like, keywords associated with animals um, don't have, you know, anything to do. Or I don't know. It's, it's just something I struggle with. So... <laughs> Um, are you ready to see the silliest oracle deck you've ever seen in your life? Uh, so I, I went down a rabbit hole and now I have to zoom way out because this, uh, oracle deck I'm going to show you is 800 cards. What? 800 cards? Yeah. And it's not even a real oracle deck. This is the illustrated wildlife treasury that I found on eBay. So when I was a kiddo in a public Montessori school, we had a box of these um, printed in the um, 80s. Are you ready for this? I don't think you're ready. Look at all of the cards. There they all are. There they all are. So here's all of the cards. And they're so good. So here's all of my reptiles. I divided them up. Um, so we have, oh gosh, I don't even know where to start with this one. Uh, but let's start with the reptiles. So I've separated out all of the reptiles. And we'll move this aside for just a moment so I can show you. Look at them. Here's, we, we've got the caiman. And on the back... We've just got animal facts, a quiet crocodile. And then it go it goes in depth. We get the phylum, the class, the order, the family, length, length at birth. Ooh, um, uh, fourth tooth invisible with mouth closed, bony plates on belly, 40 to 50 eggs laid a year. Holy cow, that's so many eggs. Um, and it just, it just gives you straight up animal facts. And that's what I want. <laughs> in an animal animal deck. I want I want the facts. I want to know about the habitat. Let's see. Chameleon. An animal with a lasso? Ooh, I'm intrigued. And all of them have these like really weird subheadings, which I think are also great <laughs> for divination. So, you know, the chameleon is very slow to move. 
um, it tells us, um, you know, uh, it tells us like, you know, you would get the chameleon. I've seen the chameleon a million times in different Oracle decks, um, but we don't really get facts about what motivates, um, where does it live? Uh, uh, like it gives us facts about why it does that. Like an angry chameleon will turn from brown to black. This change is caused by the action of the nervous system on the pigment cells. Yes, I want to know. I want to know. Um, the one chameleon will not tolerate another, even a female in its territory. This solitary habit uh, is abandoned only at mating time. So did you know that chameleons were loners? No, right? Like, I feel like that you need some important animal facts. And as, I don't know, as a, as a neurodivergent kiddo in the 90s in Montessori school, like, these were my favorite. I loved, we had to do this, like, big project where we, um, uh, you know, we learned all of the kingdom phylum orders of the animal kingdom, and we had to write, like, the definition of each order and then draw a picture of an animal to represent that order. And that was my favorite thing that I, I had done until that time. Like, in, in elementary school, this was my magnum opus. Um, so, for me, this is, like, absolutely an inner child deck. <laughs> <laughs> because this is the deck of cards that I used when I was a kid, right? And uh, you can, you know, you're like, how do, okay, so you've got 800 cards. How do you use, how do you use this? Well, you can shuffle them. Look, look at that. You can shuffle them. Uh, and then you can, you know, you can draw a card. Ooh, Asiatic Pit Viper. All right. Look at that guy. He's such a good guy. And so with 800 cards, you get way more um, possibilities. And so how I've done this <laughs> is uh, I've assigned a dice number to my six different types. So first we've got fossils. Um, then we've got insects. Then we've got like fish, but I also put all of the like marine life in there. So we've got some whales and seals and uh, like marine mammals in there. Then we've got our reptiles, our birds, and then the biggest section is our mammals. So the way I use this deck is I, since you can't shuffle all 800 cards, um, maybe if we want to do a three card spread, we'll take three of these little bone dice and we'll roll them. So I've got a two, a three and a five. So that means my first card is going to be from the invertebrates. We get an invertebrate, we get an aquatic animal, and then we get a reptile. And that's our reading. Um, and so that's how I use this <laughs> um, massive deck. But let me show you my favorite, my favorite, uh, I, I'm calling them suits. I don't know if that's fair, but it's the extinct fossilized guys. So I was a dinosaur nerd when I was a kid, really into the dinosaurs. And this, I have this many, so over a hundred just like dinosaur flashcards. And I really want to get the, uh, <laughs> the dinosaur Marseille deck and then use it with these guys because they're so great. I've got like three of him. Um, and, uh, oh, I forgot, I forgot. Uh, uh, I gotta tell you guys, there's a really hilarious ad for this deck. You, I'll, I'll drop the link below, but you have to watch. There's a little kid in the 80s in his bedroom and it turns into a jungle and he's wearing a little a pith hat, like a total nerd. Um, and it's, it's, you know, this was like a subscription. <laughs> like, don't cancel my subscription to wildlife cards, treasury cards, dad. I'll, you know, it was, it's very good. I love the ichthyosaurs, love an ichthyosaur. And then, you know, it's a fish lizard. All right. And then you get some facts. 40 feet, huge. That's a big guy, right? 
Anyways, I think that these are so beautiful. And, you know, we never, we talk about our, you know, ancestor work, <laughs> right? That's a popular topic on, on TerraTube. We all like to, you know, work with our ancestors. People have been here before. But what about ancestral life on planet Earth? When do we work with these guys? These guys have been here a long time ago. And I just think that they're fantastic. Uh, and if you want to do some, like, deep, <laughs> deep time, work with, like, deep time. Let's bring in these, like, Mesozoic dudes, right? And I feel like the only way we, like, we're using, if you think about, like, what, what oil is on the planet, it's, it's, it's the, uh, blood and the, and the bodies and the decomposition of all previous life on the planet. And we're, like, kind of vampirically, uh, sucking it out of the planet to fuel, uh, fuel life today so wild and we never stop to be you know like here he is again but think about think about all that all of that previous life matter so yeah this is a this is a plug for <laughs> honoring our deep ev ev evolutionary uh predecessors on the planet um I love it so much. I love it. such a nerd. Okay, I'm sorry. I know. I know they're just all so good. Okay, we'll put them we'll put them away. We'll put them away. Um and then the other thing that you never get in 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 a lot of animal decks, you don't get so you don't get any of our prehistoric animal ancestors and you don't get a lot of invertebrates like the really weird creepy crawly guys. So we've got wasps and moths and beetles and bugs. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, but you also get like coral. There's a few like microorganisms in here. Uh, just, you, you know, a little 800 card slice of our biodiversity here. Tapeworms, all right. You know, cuttlefish. Um, so I just lumped all of the invertebrates together. Oh, I hate, I really do hate spiders though. But you know, you know, single cell guys, we gotta, where are they in our oracle decks? <laughs> um, yeah, and then let's, let's take a look at our, let's take a look at our fish here. Anchovy. Tuna. You know, we know these guys. And then I also included all of the ancient fish in here. Um, and let's see if I can show you. I just think that this this illustration style is actually quite beautiful. And uh, there's also, love some seals. But these whales, these whale illustrations, I think are so beautiful. Want to know uh, my favorite whale fact? So, you know, whales go around in big pods, migratory pods, and they'll travel a, like halfway across the planet. And as they travel, they sing their favorite whale bops. You know, each pod has like a set of songs that everyone knows, and they'll go through the ocean singing their favorite songs. And then on their big migratory loops, one pod will meet up with another pod, and that pod will be singing a song that the first pod had never heard before. And so they'll learn it, and then the, as they're going home, they'll go home singing their new favorite whale bops. Isn't that great? I think I, you know, I, w I, I would have a great time being a, a whale in my next life. Give me... Give me 200 years of the deep sea after this. I think that's what I want. Uh, tag yourself. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so those, we, we got to see our, uh, let's take a look. Do you guys, do you guys want to see some birds? Let's see some birds. I showed you the reptiles already. 
I think the birds are really fun. And there's some decks that are just bird decks, but I've got my own bird deck. Again, a spiny home. Elf Owl. Let's, I haven't been showing you these guys. Visitor from the Tropics. Baltimore Oriole. Living Feathers of Fire. What? Great. I want to know. And they have like really weird stories on the back sometimes. Like the writing is like quirky and charismatic. A Wall Creeper. What? A Climber of Walls. Perfect. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is the only animal deck I ever need or ever wants. Aren't they cute? And I just love the photography. Extraordinary Colonizers. All right. <laughs> I see you, white eye. Uh-oh. That's ooh, unfortunate for the white eye. Uh, you know. Okay. Sandhill Crane. Uh, it's a Griffalcon. What? Like, hedgehopping hunter. All right. I just think they're really great. I think they're really great. You can find these. I've got this for like 30 bucks on eBay. <laughs> I had to wait a while to find one that had all the dinosaur cards because I needed them. Um, and then look at all these mammals. Ah, oh, my favorite. I love these little cats. I love little cats. You know that. You know that. Um, what's his, what's his deal? A deadly paw. All right. Um, it's a leopard cat. Oh, I love a leopard cat. So this is, um, you know, this isn't one of the four new Oracle decks. So we've been on a tangent with this deck, but I did, I thought, um, since we were talking about nature oracles, this is my, this is my, uh, this is my nature animal deck, um, that I, uh, really adore um and it's really fun so you know um if we want to if we want to pick let's pick an animal let's pick an animal and then we can read it alongside our little um wisdom guy so let's let's just pick one let's see what we get Ooh, it's a reptile number four so let's we'll shuffle and the thing about drawing a card from this deck is because it's like an 800 card deck, uh, it feels really special when one of the guys come out because there's so many of all of them. We get the tailed frog, you know, so it feels like special that this guy comes and says hello. No tadpoles. The eggs of the hush tailed frog are laid in moist soil, not in water. And it isn't tadpoles that hatch from the eggs after a long incubation period. Almost all stages of metamorphosis take place within the egg. Whoa. Metamorphosis within the egg. All right. And when it hatches, the little frog already has four legs. Um, you know? So what does it mean for us to do a lot of metamorphosis uh, that can't be seen on the outside? right? We're, we're doing some like incubated metamorphosis, right? Um, that seems really fun, right? <laughs> oh. So let's, let's take a look at this guy. We'll get this out of the way. Now the cat's involved. Oh, we're making, we're making a mess. Getting off track, making a mess. It's been a second here. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me. So let's see. Let's see what's a little little message from our frog here. What's a little message? We'll do. We'll do two. Excuse me, Mrs. Excuse me. What do we got here? What do we got? Ooh, we've got scent. I'm not sure about the coffee beans for scent. Um. And then we've got Bud. Bud, I feel like that goes with our, that goes with our, uh, you know, gestation metamorphosis, you know, thing that, you know, we're in, you know, today is the day of that uh, big, big, you know, lunar eclipse stuff. We're in Scorpio season, so, you know, metamorphosis seems appropriate, but a smelly one? 
<laughs> what does that mean? Know your territory and set up definite boundaries. Okay. Recoup your energy. Recapitulate life. Revisit your family tree. That's what we're doing. Revisit your family tree and ancestral history. Yes, that's what we're doing with our ancestral uh, critters. Look at these ancestral guys. Sorry. Uh, carried away. Plug for ancient ancestors. Trust your intuition with a decision. Strengthen your personal presence by knowing irrefutably who and what you stand for. All of that is excellent. Not sure what it, why it's smelly. But um, uh, that's, uh, I'll, I'll leave it there <laughs> for our um, oracle, oracle quest uh, roundup. Um, so uh, yeah, this has been, this has been fun. Uh, Kat's gonna sit on it. All right, well, geez, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, no. yeah, she's just, it's, it's over. It's over. She sat on the frog. Um, well, I'll be back next time with, uh, more Oracle decks to, uh, explore. But I hope you've enjoyed this little Oracle update, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!